Hello everyone, and welcome to the Gebbard Woods Dulcimer and Traditional Music Festival. We will begin the countdown on the screen when the we will begin the show when the countdown on the screen reaches zero. Thank you so much for joining us. We will see you shortly.
Hello and welcome to the 31st Gebhardt Woods Dulcimer and Traditional Music Festival. My name is Steve Karlevsky and I'm the coordinator of the festival. I'm pleased and proud to be able to do this uh, as a volunteer, as is everyone else involved uh, in the festival uh, by and large. Um, if you've uh, found us, uh, welcome. Uh, you might be on YouTube or you might be on Zoom. Um, uh, we hope you just enjoy the day. Um, Back in January, we had to make the decision to whether or not to try and hold a live festival. And with so many commitments we needed to make and so many uncertainties and lockdown and whatnot, um, it, it was not unfortunately difficult to decide we, we could not do it in person. And then the question was, what would we do? Would we just cancel entirely or uh, try and do something virtually? And that also was an easy decision because um, we, this community is important to us. Um, the dulcimer community is kind of a niche musical community and we're one of the bigger players in that little pool. Um, and we just did not want to have uh, another, you know, yet another venue dry up for so many dulcimer performers um, who have really taken it hard during COVID 
um, because traveling musicians just lost all their gigs. Um, so this year, you'll see that that our festival grounds uh, are virtual, and uh, and they're they're actually the festival homepage. You've seen the festival homepage because you got here. Um, so I would um, suggest that you, when you get a chance, take a closer look. That's where you will see the uh, the links to the workshops. Uh, each hour, there will be four um, four instructional workshops going on. Uh, the links for those will appear about 10 minutes prior to, to, the, to the top of the hour. And um, um, there also, you know, we have a merchandise, uh, merchandise tent and a vendor row and some video features. Some of them I think you'll find really interesting. Um, the last time we had a festival live was two years ago. Um, and um, so, you know, a festival like that, we know how to do all the setup and and uh, all the logistics and organize the tents and the porta potties and all those things, um, and 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 we know how to run a raffle and how to set up a children's area and how to have a new talent stage and all those things that we've had years and years to figure out how to do. That's the stuff we know how to do. This is a little more like holding a festival on a different planet. And uh, so we've had to um, uh, draw on what technical skills we have. Uh, we also, um, thankfully, were able to reach out to a gentleman named Brandon, uh, uh, Brandon O'Sullivan. I don't know if Brandon wants to pop in just for a second and say hi. Uh, it's up to you. Um, the um, uh, uh, Brandon is somebody who has a great deal of experience in the Folk Alliance community. Oh, there's Brandon. Um, Hello, everybody. Uh, yeah, uh, Brandon. Brandon is uh, will be professionally producing our concert streams today and tomorrow. Um, he'll be handling all the backstage um, back and forth and uh, and coordinating. And uh, he may also pop in occasionally to keep the program moving along if necessary. Um, in the meantime, all these folks who have all this experience doing regular festivals um, will still. Uh, some of us will still be participating as MCs or as um, uh, uh, people who are inside what we're calling the community tent. Um, I encourage you to check out the community tent. That's where we're trying to build enough community this year that people feel like uh, it's a little more like a festival. You can get your questions answered there and you know, have a chat. Um, this uh, festival is brought to you by Hands, uh, Hammers and Noters Dulcimer Society of Illinois. We're not for profit, and for the last 35 years, Hands has been has had the mission of um, preserving and promoting dulcimer music. Today's program will be a combination of live and pre-recorded performance sets, and we hope you enjoy them. We've crossed one o'clock, and that means it's time to introduce uh, our first performers. We have uh, standing by in Port Orange, Florida. We have Guy and Sherry George. Uh, Guy and Sherry have been uh, past uh, uh, participants in Gebhardt Woods. Uh, they used to uh, travel over from Cleveland to be with us, but a few years ago they packed up and they moved down to the coast of Florida and uh, where they're, they have their activities down there now. Um, I think Florida suits them. I think you'll find that too. Please welcome Guy and Sherry George. Hi everybody.
being with us. That was Guy on first the hammer dulcimer and then the penny whistle and and then also uh, on the steel drum. Show him the steel drum, honey. He, he plays this a lot um, in Daytona Beach. We do a lot of calypso and um, island music and there's lots of notes inside that big salad bowl. <laughs> Um, that is, uh, where is it from? I don't know, but I found my key. <laughs> uh, anyway, we will be doing more on that later. We're going to, um, that song was Samantha Smile, a tune that Guy wrote for one of our twin girls, Samantha, and um, he writes those to get out of the doghouse occasionally. We're going to do um, a sea shanty for you. We've been doing a lot of those. Um, this one, became a went viral with TikTok. It's called the Wellerman.
strange noises in the background. Uh, that was not your uh, your set, your screen. That was a bird in the background. And don't if you say, own a bird, you know the. Don't say his name. Don't say his name. He he probably will show up later. Um, it, sorry, I forgot. Well, anyway, he's like a two-year-old. You can never predict. It's too hot to have him outside, so he's here, but quiet for the most part. We're uh, going to do a couple more, um, we call them pirate tunes. They're uh, actually Celtic origin. Sea shanties also. There must have been a lot of Irish pirates because a lot of the tunes that we do as pirate tunes are kind of are Celtic. These are um, two, uh, Molly Malone and Black Velvet <coughs> Band. Thank you for having us, and thank you for all of you, the volunteers who are putting this together. Brandon has been great. He has his stuff together, so we appreciate that as well. This is a, a tune that we do often, and we've heard it in jams. It's called South.
Ooh, Sherry on the ukulele. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we are um, happy to be teaching this afternoon as well. Guy starts in an hour, I think, and I start f. No, I start in an hour. Anyway, look for us on the on the face on the page, and there's links there, handouts as well. We're gonna do one, uh, two more. One is um, they're both folk tunes of a different nature. They're Jamaican. First one is Jamaica Farewell.
Thank you, thank you to Guy and Sherry George. Yeah, just really, really quickly, you're going to have your your Gulf Coast Dulcimer Festival this winter. Yes, it is scheduled and on a, the books and a cruise. Awesome. Oh, a cruise, yes. Um, islandguymusic.com. There's information. Um, the Gulf Coast Dulcimer.com is information on the retreat and awesome. the cruise link is there as well. Terrific. It's going to be fun in person. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you so much. Next up, Mike Anderson in just a minute. Hi, welcome to the virtual Gebhard Woods Dulcimer Festival in its new format. Um, I am Donna. I am part of the Hammers and Noters Dulcimer Society of Illinois. We incorporated in 1988 to promote the dulcimer and its music. And our main way of doing this is through the Gebhard Woods Dulcimer Society uh, Festival here that we have annually. This is our first time virtually. So it's kind of a learning experience, but it's been a lot of fun to be able to connect. Uh, we usually have performers from near and far and some that we have as special favorites from past years, as well as some new faces to our stage. Our next performer is one of my favorites. I saw him a long time ago at the uh, Mountain Music Festival in uh, Arkansas. He is a dulcimer player. He is a storyteller. He has written books. He's an author. He's got wonderful recordings out. And he has, he has been the driving person behind the Clayville Storytelling Festival in the past. So please welcome Mike Anderson. How y'all doing? Wish we could be together at the festival. Next year. My set is going to consist of uh, a few tunes and they're all ones that I wrote. Two of them are lyric uh, singing type things. And then there's two that are instrumentals. They were written a long time ago, um, maybe 1980s. And they're both from a recording I did called Solo Not Alone. If you've picked up my recordings over the years, there was one that had instrumental dulcimer all by itself, except there were wolves and loons and uh, all sorts of Northwoods animal sounds behind me. It was called Solo Not Alone. And it came about because I was sitting on a dock up in uh, outside of Ely, Minnesota, on Snowbank Lake. And as I sat there playing the dulcimer, being eaten alive by mosquitoes, there was all sorts of sounds going on around me. There were loons calling back and forth. Uh, there was a uh, an osprey, which is a hawk-like bird that came down, and it, they're the ones who scream when they dive. Um, there were ducks gabbling about by me. It was very, very pleasant except for the stupid mosquitoes. And even they added their own little bit of sound. The ducks were fun. Um, something you're not supposed to do, but I was feeding bread to the ducks. And it's not necessarily good for ducks. But if you ever feel bad about yourself, you're having one of those times and that's a little bit uh, low, and you need some moral support, find yourself a bunch of ducks just swimming around. 
and throw some food out to them, something that's good for them. I had bread. Because you can tell them a joke. And the moment you tell them a joke, throw some food out, and they go, quack, 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 and they'll laugh at your joke. It's great. Anyway, here's a tune that came from that time. It's called the Drunkard's March. It's not a march, but uh, uh, someone who is a bit inebriated probably wouldn't march very well anyway, would they? Um, the Drunkard's March. Oh, by the way, for you dulcimer folks out there, it's in DAA. Because that's what I was playing back then. It was all DAA. March. Hope you enjoyed it. I was pretty proud of that back in the 80s. Thank you so much for listening. Wish I were a cowboy riding on my horse. Wish I were a cowboy with a ten gallon hat on my head. Riding to those canyons and watch the tumbleweed blow. Wish I were a cowboy, don't you know? Wish I were a cowboy Riding off into the red sunset Laying out my bedroll And counting all the stars in the sky Riding to those canyons And watch the tumbleweed blow Wish I were a cowboy, don't you know But a cowboy's life is gone Ranges have all been fenced And a highway runs where the buffalo used to roam Seven ladies in the sky Now 
now I count only five And a ten gallon hat just cost too much to buy Wish I were a cowboy getting a drink from a clear cold stream. Wish I were a cowboy knowing all of the air was clean. Riding to those canyons and watch the tumbleweed blow. Wish I were a cowboy, don't you know? But a cowboy's life is gone. Ranges have all been fenced. And a highway runs where the buffalo used to roam the Seven ladies in the sky, well now I count only five And a ten gallon hat just cost too much to buy Wish I were a cowboy Riding on my horse Wish I were a cowboy with a ten gallon hat on my head Right into those canyons, I don't know if I'll come back. Wish I were a cowboy, that's a fact. I'd ride into those canyons and watch the tumbleweed blow. Wish I were a cowboy, don't you know? Wish I Were a Cowboy, song I wrote probably somewhere back in the late 80s, 1990s, never really did much with it until now. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Here's another instrumental I wrote. Um, back in the 1980s. It's back when I was building dulcimers and I had a, uh, a shop at the Clayville Rural Life Center, which is between uh, Petersburg, Illinois and Springfield, Illinois. And Clayville was a, uh, a stagecoach stop. The Broadwell Tavern was there. As you were traveling along that route, you would probably stop and spend the night and have a meal based in about the 1850s or so. And I had a shop over in a lean-to right off the uh, uh, potter's shop and uh, the blacksmith. And it was very much 1850s. I had, I had electricity. Um, I had a bandsaw. That was my big tool of the time. The rest was all hand things. The dulcimer on the mantle behind me is the only dulcimer that I have that I actually built. I've just recently located another one of mine. Someone bought it off Craigslist in New Orleans and found my name on the inside. You builders on the in out there, put your contact information on the inside, at least your name and a date. Uh, it sure helps the historians out there. We've got a lot more of those right now than um, we've ever had before. Anyway, one time at Clayville, it was raining, um, and we weren't going to have any uh, visitors to the site. It was a, a living history farm. So I'm in there in my shop, and I'm just messing around. I really didn't want to uh, build anything. The humidity was a little high, uh, and it was hot. So I sat and was just messing with the dulcimer. And once again, I was in DAA. The dulcimer behind me that I built does not have a six and a half fret. It was not common 
to put that in back in those days. And I wrote this little chord exercise, basically what it was, picking and chords. And eventually it turned into a song and it was called Clayville Morning because it was morning and I was at Clayville. Creativity plus, right? <laughs> anyway, when I went to re uh, record it and put it on that recording called Solo Not Alone, which is natural sounds and uh, the dulcimer. As I was recording it, it dawned on me what the song really was. The song was that storm, that rainstorm that was going through. So as you listen to this song, um, if you get the recording, it starts off with a pitter-patter of rain, and then eventually the thunder happens, um, and then it all subsides back into the soft little storm again, soft little rainstorm. So listen for that in the song. Clave Morning, and I dedicate that to Jewel Moyer, it was his favorite song. Thanks a lot for listening, see you next year at Gephardt Woods, see ya, thanks. Here's another tune I wrote a long time ago. This is stuff that I would rarely do on a uh, concert stage. But buried here in the tape, in the video, 
I can do this kind of stuff. This is another song from that same period as I Wish I Were a Cowboy. This one started off as I was driving from Springfield uh, East, Springfield, Illinois, traveling east along the interstates, and there was a huge thunderstorm going on to my uh, left, to the north, and there was another one happening to the south. And where I was driving, the sun was shining, no rain whatsoever. That would soon change. But at that moment, that's all that was there. There's a big storm coming. Sarah, put your hat on. Big storms are coming. Clouds are hanging low. Big storms are coming. Close up all the windows. Big storm are coming across the prairie. Now spring comes to the Midwest. Plant time is here. They're firing up the internationals and hitching up the John Deere. They're plowing up the good earth, the sowing of their seed. When spring comes to the Midwest on the prairie. Summer comes to the Midwest, dog day setting in. Yeah, the temperature's climbing higher, it's gonna hit a hundred again. This weather ain't fit for humans, but the corn soaks it up like sin. When summer comes to the Midwest on the prairie, big storm coming. Sarah, put your hat on. Big storms are coming and the clouds are hanging low. Big storms are coming, close up all the windows. Big storms are coming across the prairie. Now fall comes to the Midwest, decked out in a colorful dress. Like a country girl at a barn dance, she's showing off her best. Her cheeks are flushed with the harvest. And the sun shines through her eyes When fall comes to the Midwest on the prairie Big storm coming Sarah, put your hat on Big storms are coming And the clouds are hanging low Big storms are coming Close up all the windows Big storms are coming across the prairie The old man comes to the Midwest, blowing in with his ice and snow. He covers the fields with a blanket, help the winter wheat grow. There's time to go by sled ride, pulled by the tractor again. When the old man comes to the Midwest on the prairie, there's a big storm coming. Sarah, put your hat on. Coming and the clouds are hanging low. Big storms are coming. Close up all the windows. Big storms are coming across the prairie. There's a big storm coming, 
Sarah, put your hat on. Storms are coming and the clouds are hanging low. Big storms are coming. Close up all the windows. Big storms are coming across the prairie. There's a big storm that's coming across the prairie. There's a big storm that's coming across the prairie. Big storms are coming. Thanks. Our thanks to Mike Anderson. Um, I don't know if you all saw it. He had his copy of Calvin and Hobbes, It's a Wonderful World, down in the corner. And I have my copy of Mike Anderson, Solo Not Alone. Coming up, we have Diane Ipple at 2 o'clock. And on the way, we're just going to have a little bit of extra preview video for you. Hope you enjoy it.
Okay, welcome back. Here we are at two o'clock. We have a new set of workshops uh, beginning, and we also have our next performer, and our next performer is Diane Ippel. Diane would be a very familiar face to anybody who's been with the Gebhardt Woods Festival any length of time. Uh, she is the principal founder of the festival. She was one of the founders of Hands of Illinois back in the 1980s. She um, has just been with us the whole time. And uh, even now that she's moved out to Ventura, California, she still sits on the board of Hands. And we're delighted to have her in live performance today. Hello, Diane. Please welcome Hi, Diane Ippel. Oh, it's so great to see everybody. It's my first time to do this virtual, and uh, my heart is so happy and so lifted by seeing everyone. So thank all the volunteers who have helped to make this possible, and thank you to my son, Pete, who has done a masterful job of making me feel comfortable doing this live uh, performance today. So hope you all enjoy. Swing low, sweet chariot, come and for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot, come and for to carry me home. I looked over Jordan, and what did I see? Come and for to carry me home. A band of angels coming after me. Come and for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot. Come and for to carry me home. Swing low. Sweet chariot, come and for to carry me home. If you get to heaven before I do, come and for to carry me home. Just tell my Lord that I'm a coming to, come and for to carry me home. Swing low. Sweet chariot, come and for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot, come and for to carry me home. So the next piece that I'm going to uh, play is called Winster Gallop in England, but in the Basque culture, it's called Ashlabelska. I was playing this tune at the Santa Barbara Farmer's Market one day, and I asked this lady what her heritage was, because sometimes I like to play things in honor of people's heritage. And she said she was Basque, and I knew that there was a relationship between Morris, English Morris dancing and Basque dancing. So I played this tune, and this beautiful young woman started dancing. She knew the whole song, and uh, anyway, here it goes.
So this this next song I'm, I'm going to play for you is uh, called The Hawthorn Tree of Cotter, and it's a Scottish air. So the next piece that I'm going to share with you is uh, called Ragtime Annie. Out here on the West Coast, they only play it with two parts, but I learned it in the eastern part of the country where we play it with three. So that's how I'm going to render it today. This is an English ballad called Lord Randall, 
um, and it has a, a very complex story in a short number of verses. It's a little gory, but not too bad. Where have you been all the day, Lord Randall, my son? Where have you been all the day, my pretty one? I've been to my sweetheart's mother. I've been to my sweetheart's mother. Make my bed soon, for I'm sick to my heart, and I fain would lie down. What have you been eating there, Lord Randall, my son? What have you been eating there, my pretty one? Eels and eels broth, mother. Eels and eels broth, mother. Make my bed soon, for I'm sick to my heart, and I fain would lie down. What was the color of their skins, Lord Randall, my son? What was the color of their skins, my pretty one? Speckled and speckled, mother. Speckled and speckled, mother. Make my bed soon, for I'm sick to my heart, and I fain would lie down. What will you leave your brothers, Lord Randall, my son? What will you leave your brothers, my pretty one? My gold and my silver, mother. My gold and my silver, mother. Make my bed soon, for I'm sick to my heart, and I fain would lie down. What will you leave your sweetheart, Lord Randall, my son? What will you leave your sweetheart, my pretty one? A rope to hang her mother, a rope to hang her mother. Make my bed soon, for I'm sick to my heart, and I fain would lie down. So this next piece is called A uh, Parson's Farewell. It was actually written by John Playford in 16-something, and uh, it still remains one of my very favorite, most beautiful pieces I love to play.
gehört. Okay, so this, um, this the next song is called Woodland Flowers, and I uh, want to thank my former husband, Rob Williams, for teaching me this beautiful song, Woodland Flowers. So we got six minutes left. All right. Um, this is a, a traditional uh, song. One of the first ones I learned when I was playing guitar was this one. It's called Shady Grove. Cheeks as red as a blooming rose, eyes of the deepest brown. You are the darling of my heart. See till the sun goes down. Shady Grove, my little love. Shady Grove, I say. Shady Grove, my little love. Don't wait till judgment day. Shady Grove, my little love. Standing in the door. Shoes and stockings in her hand. And her little bare feet on the floor. Cheeks as red as a blooming rose, eyes of the deepest brown. You are the darling of my heart, say till the sun goes down. Wish I had a big fine horse, corn to feed him on. Pretty little girl, stay at home, feed him when I'm gone. Cheeks as red as a blooming rose, eyes of the deepest brown. You are the darling of my heart, say till the sun goes down. Um, and uh, Pete suggested I add this to the set, so I'm going to put in um, my version of uh, Elzig's Retreat or Elzig's Farewell. The story is that uh, during the Civil War, the regiments of the army were, um, or, or whatever force they were in, were named by the uh, first name of the commanding officer and a number. So, like Joe's 22nd or, you know, whatever. So depending on whether how successful they were in battle, it was either a retreat or a farewell. And so this is either Elzik's retreat or Elzik's farewell.
so my last piece that I'm going to play, I learned in England um, at the Sedmouth Folk Festival. There were some wonderful French musicians there, and they kept playing this tune called Fête du Village, which means uh, village festival. So it's kind of fitting to uh, end this wonderful coming together of dulcimers. Again, thank you everyone so much for helping to make this possible, especially Brandon too. And uh, so anyway, this is Fête du Village. Thank you so much. I can't hear your applause, but I know it's out there and I'm feeling your energy and be safe and be well. Thank you, Diane. Um, I got to I got to think to myself what it must have been like back in 1988 to pull together the first of the Gebhard Woods festivals and just imagining could you have ever dreamed that there would be a time where we could be sharing this music over video in real time and Oh, and people never, from all over the country being able to see it. It's quite amazing. I never did imagine that. But during that first the year, it was about nine months before from when I started planning it to let when it happened. And I worked really hard to find as many other dulcimer organizations around the state and around that were close enough that could participate. And so in our first meeting, we had 19 people from all over northern Illinois, southern Illinois, middle Illinois, you know, wherever they were, we came together and started working together. And uh, I'm so grateful for all those people that helped. And when I had questions I couldn't answer, I would call other people that had festivals that were festival coordinators and say, well, I'm having this problem. How would you handle it in your festival? So that I want to thank all those other festival people too who helped us in the beginning. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. I'm glad you could do it from out in Ventura, California. And Steve, thank you so much for coordinating this event and keeping it going. Glad, glad, glad I can be, do my part. Uh, we have February Sky coming up at the bottom of the hour, so please stick around.
Next up is February Sky. This duo is from the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. They are traveling or touring musicians and they each have graced our stage before and together. Uh, Phil Cooper is known for traditional and Celtic music on guitar. And Susan Urban is known for her beautiful voice and her songs that she writes. Um, they both use their voices to blend and give us beautiful music. Their latest CD is Silver Wolf Moon. And if you go to their website, you will be able to order that. Um, and if you were at the first Gebhard's Woods Dulcimer Festival in 1988, you may recognize Phil Cooper as our first master of ceremonies. Thank you very much, Donna. Um, yes, we've always had a great time being at the Gebhardt Woods Dulcimer Festival over the years in whatever capacity we were there for. And this year we'll start our set uh, with this old Scottish tune called Roslyn Castle. you all very much. We appreciate the virtual applause. Um, we're going to sing a Scottish song now about, uh, it's actually a precursor to the uh, Wild Mountain Time song. Uh, it comes from the 1700s. Uh, it turned into Wild Mountain Time sometime in the folk scare in the 1950s uh, by the McClamans family, but this uh, predates it and they probably borrowed some verses from it. It's called the Braze of Balquitter. Now we think it's just a tad more positive than uh, Wild Mountain Time, but 
whatever, you know. Yeah, I learned it from the singing of uh, Len Graham, a Northern Irish singer from uh, Northern Ireland, of course. He used to be in a band called uh, Skylark. Coming from the fair, from the fair at Balafanon. When I met this winsome dame, she was fairer than Rihanna. I asked her where she dwelt as we strolled along together. By the bunny mountain side, she replied amongst the fair. Lassie, go to the braes of Belquitter, where the wild berries grow amongst the bonny bloom and heather, where the deer and the roe lightly bounding together, sort the long summer's day round the braes of Belquitter. I will twine my love about near yon clear crystal fountain, and I'll cover it over with the flowers of the mountain. I will range through the wild and the deep glens so dreary, and return with the spoils to the arms of my dear. very much. Um, After all, this festival does have traditional music in the title, so we thought we would play a, a traditional, traditional song that we actually like a real lot. Well, we actually don't play songs we don't like. Um, uh, well, I've been known to do that in my life because I was hired to do so, but not any time recently, <laughs> that's for sure. Well, this is one that came from my pen, and it's loosely based on the life of my maternal grandmother who came here from Poland at a very young age. And she did not have a particularly happy life, so she was not exactly a warm, fuzzy grandma because she'd been through way too much. And I did have to kind of stretch a little for some of the things in here, but most of it is, as far as I know, quite faithful to the life she actually lived, called The Old Land Is Ever On My Mind. 
I was born out on a peasant farm in 1899 Back in Poland, not too far from Germany Though we never had much money, still the earth she kept us well And the love of working with the land was always part of me and the old land is ever on my mind. Then the great war took my brothers, never saw those boys again. We could hear the shells a hundred miles away. So my parents scraped my fear together, choked away the tears. As their only daughter left their homeland for the USA And the old land is ever on my mind I was just a Polack servant girl My age was 14 years I would scrub and clean for 16 hours a day I could never breathe the sweet fresh air or walk out in the sun. And when bedtime came, my weary frame upon two chairs I'd lay. And the old land is ever on my mind. Now my husband was a drunken, brutal gang. I was sold to him in payment of a loan. Soon I had a son and daughter. He would beat us every night. So I sent my kids to an orphanage and braved the world alone. And the old land is ever on my mind. I found work in a sweatshop It was dark and dingy there Sewing coats and suits For fifty cents a day And in time I scraped and saved enough To bring my children home And I bought for us a two-flat With a yard where they could play and the old land is ever on my mind. Now the sweatshop, it was life to me for 40 years and more. On the piecework, always racing with the clock. Look, my hands are scarred and ugly from the times I sewed them through. I would stem the blood with a dirty rag and never even stop. And the old land is ever on my mind. My son passed on at 25, a failure of the heart, brought the sad and early ending of his day. My daughter went her own way, and we hardly ever speak. She complains that I'm not modern, but I cannot change my ways. And the old land is ever on my mind. Now I've grown too old for peace work. So I putter around this place And I farm the tiny yard I call my own 
Now I wonder if I should have stayed there in the old country. For I still think half in Polish, and my heart is yet at home. And the old land is ever on my mind. People who say all the immigrants who came here from different countries had it easy, well, there's one true story that will tell those people that that's not necessarily true. Well, besides performing uh, in regular festivals and other venues, when we travel, we do a lot of uh, music-based UU services, and this that is a... That means Unitarian Universalist, for those of you who don't know. But this is a song we put in one of them about uh, death and resurrection myths, and it's, uh, if you can imagine, if you ever watched the PBS specials by Joseph Campbell, The Power of Myth, this is like uh, Joseph Campbell goes to the brewery because it's about brewing beer, but the rest of the song is rather savagely metaphoric. Uh, you can have all that gratuitous violus, violence with no guilt. The traditional it's song. It's just wheat. Yep. But it's not the traffic version. And it's called John Barleycorn. <laughs> Oh, the worthy men come out of the West, their fortunes for to try. And these three men made the solemn vow, John Barleycorn should die. They plowed, they sowed, they harrowed him in, throwed quads all on his head. And these three men made a solemn vow, John Barleycorn was dead. They let him lie for a very long time till the rain from heaven did fall. Then little Sir John, he raised up his head and he soon amazed them all. They left him lie till a long midsummer till he looked both pale and wan. Then little Sir John rode a long, long beard and so he became a man. They hired men with the size so sharp to cut him off down by the knee. They rolled him and tied him around by the waist, served him most barbarously. They hired men with the sharp pitchforks who pierced him to the heart. But the loader he served him far worse than that, for he bound him to the cart. They rolled him around and around the field till they came into a barn. And there they made a solemn mouth of poor John Barleycorn. They hired men with the crabtree sticks to cut him skin from bone. But the miller he served them far worse than that, for he ground him between two stones. Here's little Sir John in the nut brown bowl and brandy in the glass. And little Sir John in the nut brown bowl with the stronger man at last. For the hunter he can't hunt the fox nor so loudly blow his horn. And the tinker he can't mend his kettles or his pots without a little bit of John Barleycorn. Well, we're going to play one more song for you, and this one is based in 
the place where we live here in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Yeah, it's for all those uh, annoying funeral insurance ads you see on TV. Yes, uh, people up here, instead of paying for garbage pickup, well, like the bar next door, which is in the song, is a uh, has a burn barrel. And uh, one evening we were watching one of those ads, and Phil leaned over to me and said something. And I said, oh my gosh, there's a song. So here it is. We live up in the frozen north in a tiny UP town. Most everybody is broke up here. Few jobs are to be found. The bar next door has got a burn barrel for torching all their trash. They don't pay for garbage pickup, and that saves those folks some cash. One night, when we were watching some commercials on TV, a dire warning came from some insurance company. They said a funeral could cost us 30,000 bucks in bread. My dear sweetie turned and looked me in the eye, and then he said, Burn there when I die. Let my ashes blow in a beautiful snow against that northern sky. And the neighbors will be saying, Man, he sure is one hot guy. said that this was fine with me, but it had to go both ways. No caskets and no funeral homes, no priest to come and pray. However, I would like a bit of fancy fanfare when I go. No, it will not cost much money, dear. Burn barrel when I croak. You can toss some fireworks in there with a nice thick log of oak. And the folks will say she went out with a bang in a cloud of smoke. So throw me in that burn barrel when I croak. Our Facebook friends can honor us. No money need be spent to help ensure the poor surviving spouse can pay the rent. And if the COVID time is past, a sing around could not be wrong. But if not, they all can get on Zoom and sing our favorite songs. So throw us in that burn. Mixed with the and until we soar above the clouds, we'll keep on singing songs. But throw us in that burn barrel when we're gone. Throw me in that burn barrel. Throw me in that old burn barrel. Throw me in that burn barrel. Thank you all so much. We're going to be doing some workshops, teaching workshops. Uh, later today, we're doing uh, singing along with dulcimer, sing and play along. Uh, you don't Not even have to play a dulcimer to participate. And uh, tomorrow, we're doing two workshops, one on uh, song and tune writing. 
And interactive, participatory, and non-judgmental. Yes, so and if you've got the song you want to participate with yourself, you can. that's your opportunity, and uh, we will give you encouraging words. And we'll have a creative arrangements workshop with Sarah Morgan as well. Absolutely. Looking forward to all of this and looking forward to seeing a lot of the other performers today. Had a blast so far. So see you in a bit. Thank you so much, February Sky, Phil Cooper and Susan Urban. I'm glad you mentioned the workshops. I was going to do that, so thank you. Um, and uh, you are among many people I've already seen today that I'm just really looking forward to being able to see in person next year at the festival. So, Absolutely. so are we, Steve, yes. and thank you so much for all the work you've put into this. And I know you've helped other festivals too, so you know you deserve a medal and a pat on the back. Yep. Well, thank, thank you, and thank you for joining us from, from up in the UP. All You're right. very welcome. Okay, so we will be back uh, top of the hour, another set of workshops, and the next performer will be Mary Z. Cox. So stick around.
Hello, everyone. My name is Stephen, and I'm one of the people who's been working on bringing this festival to you. To make a donation to our festival, your donations go to musicians. Next up is Mary Z. Cox. Had for Mary to send us a video for last year's festival when she was playing a banjo on the beach. So we're glad to have her now, today, live and in person. Hey, Gibhard Woods Festival. Here's Mary Z. Cox, straight from Cashers, North Carolina. Scotland, and the second tune is an Irish fiddle tune called Julia Delaney. And this is my uh, 
missing link gold tone baritone banjo that we'll be playing it on. while I have a pick adjustment here. This first dulcimer was built by Kurt Zimmerman and 
The front of it is Spanish curly cedar, and the back of it is uh, figured mahogany. I'm gonna play you Julianne Johnson, which is an old time uh, fiddle dance tune. And it's one of the tunes that I played in the finals of the Deep South Mountain Dulcimer Championships in Petal, Mississippi. And it goes a little like this. This one was also built by Kurt Zimmerman, and it's made of a Peruvian redwood called Goncala Alves. Okay, let me get all hooked up here. This song was written by Lead Belly, in 1915, it's called Western Cowboy, and it goes a little like this.
What was the greatest battle that was ever on the Western Plain? What was the greatest battle that was ever on the Western Plain? Was me and a bunch of cowboys. We rode into Jesse James. probably don't have to do a lot of yoga and break my neck to do to fill some of this time <laughs> what do you think I like that one what do you need for Serena do you think that's my favorite is that your favorite yep <laughs> yeah my daughter says don't do this one uh, she doesn't like that one Good okay for tips. let me kind of get tuned up here just a minute my uh, Deering John Hartford 22 fret banjo and it's been with me quite a while and it's always one of my favorites to play live because it's my lightest banjo. It's nice and light. Okay, uh, I'm going to play a little bit of Snowdrop and in the 1800s they think it came out of the 1800s uh, in Appalachia or the backwoods someplace in the south. And then in the 1900s, 
A lot of people got a hold of it, and I think they even played it on the Grand Ole Opry, and then it became a uh, very popular uh, banjo contest uh, number all throughout the South and all almost into the uh, 21st century. And many, many banjo players have had first place playing this tune all over the uh, South. It's raining right now in the Cashers Valley, North Carolina. And it doesn't snow here very often. But when it does, it sounds a little like this.
boy, I like that last tune. Uh, thank you so much to Mary Z. Cox for bringing not only your mountain dulcimer, but your banjo to our stage. Um, for what it's worth, folks, it is storming in and around Morris right now. So might have been a challenging afternoon to have a festival today. But that's always luck of the draw with the live festival outdoors. Anyway, coming up in just a few minutes is Katie Moritz. Okay, next up in the program, we have Katie Moritz. Uh, Katie is a multi-talented, multi-instrumentalist. Uh, she is known and loved for her artwork and her design work and also her music. Um, she's one of the uh, driving people behind the quarantine festivals that have been uh, held this last year um, online to just a big, a big boost to the performer community and, and to people who want to be able to have instruction during COVID times. Uh, best news for all of us, of course, is that she is also a national hammer dulcimer champion. Please welcome Katie Moritz. Thank you, Steve. Um, and Steve was right. It is definitely storming in and around the Morris area. I'm I'm located about 17 miles north of Morris, so I'm pretty close to Gebhard Woods, and it's been storming. It just started about 20 minutes ago, and it's kind of quiet now, so hopefully it stays that way for the next 25 minutes or so. I'm going to start off with a medley of a few tunes, and we'll see where we go from there. Thank you. 
thank you. Um, so those three tunes, hopefully they weren't overmodulated. I, I can see that there were some microphone issues. Uh, those three tunes, the first one's called Tomahawk. That's a tune that I learned from Paul Van Arsdell who came uh, to Gebert Woods uh, a number of years ago when I was there and he was a really inspiring player to me. Um, the next one was Cherokee Shuffle and the next one was called Red Wing. Um, all three of those are really tunes that I love to play, so I figured I'd include them. Uh, my favorite tunes to play happen to be waltzes, though. So I'm going to play a few waltzes um, for a rainy day here. And uh, yeah, the first one we'll do, I'm just going to do Westphalia Waltz. That's, this is the first tune I ever learned how to play on the hammer dulcimer besides boil and cabbage. <laughs> Thank you. 
called Westphalia Waltz. And this next tune is up in the key of G. It's called Berlin Waltz. because I think I'm about 10 minutes into playing and this entire year I have only done these gigs online where we play for maybe 10 15 minutes tops so 25 minutes is quite a luxury and I think a lot of us just aren't quite used to it yet so um, I've got a few more tunes prepared for you um, this next one is a tune written by another fellow Illinoisan and my mentor Bill Robinson who is coming up next um, This is called sunshine and it's one of my favorite tunes of his so I asked him if I could play it today make sure he hadn't played it um, so This is called sunshine
again, that was that was a tune called Sunshine. Um, I'm sure you can find it on some of Bill Robinson's recordings. This uh, next tune, actually, I think I'm just going to switch gears um, and switch over to the ukulele for a little bit. I'm going to buzz through a quick little tune for you, and then I'll invite a guest to join me. All right. sister to join me we're gonna do a, a little tune on the on the ukuleles here and I just wanted to say thank you thank you to um, everybody with the uh, Gebert Woods but Steve Karlovsky I know has done a lot of the organizing for this event and I know I know that this can be like herding cats <laughs> so um, it's a lot of work and thank you for inviting me to be a part of it this is my sister Adele Healy we're gonna do a tune that Thank goodness just went into the public domain this year <laughs> uh, called uh, Five Foot Two, Eyes of Blue. Yes, sir, one of those has anybody seen my 
before we before we played <laughs> were, were we gonna say girl or gal and she was saying gal and I was saying girl and we decided on girl and then I sang gal <laughs> <sighs> all right this last piece I'm gonna play is featuring Adele this is a steel pan which you saw a little bit earlier this is a broke piece um, called Allegro by Yoko Katie, what a what a what a cool set! Uh, Thank thanks, you. thanks, thanks so much, and thanks for introducing us to your sister. Um, so, so we now the, the Gephardt Festival now knows there are two talented sisters in the family. It's the wonderful Very thing good. about being in quarantine this past year is you you have to play music with the people that you're closest to. <laughs>
That's right. That's absolutely right. Well, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Uh, just a few minutes. Uh, as Uh, just a uh, just a few minutes. Uh, we'll have Bill Robinson. So as we are every year, we are delighted to present Bill Robinson and Friends. Bill is one of those festival originals. He performed in the first festival. He's performed in all of our festivals. And he's played at all of our Saturday night old time dances. Um, he, we could not have a better friend of the Gephardt Woods Festival um, than Bill Robinson. And as through the, the COVID times, musicians that perform in groups have a really really difficult time because they're not able to get together and play. And uh, I think you'll see that um, uh, Bill loves to play and the people to play with him love to play with him also. Please welcome Bill Robinson and friends. So what are we going to do here, Bill? All right. Welcome everyone here at our, our home and uh, with the uh, uh, COVID going on. So anyway, this is the first time that we've all had a chance to play together and, and so... In well over a year. <clears throat> yes. So we're going to start out with one called Festival Rag and it goes like this. <laughs>
some time together uh, and uh, then he quit coming and so uh, I had I wrote this tune and I actually composed it on the banjo but then, nice. then I switched it over to dulcimer but uh, one day Louis showed up to where I was coming from and and uh, so I played the tune for him and uh, <clears throat> he said well what do you call it and I said well I guess when Louis back in town so that's how it came came about here so it goes like this <clears throat> Thank you. saying I don't have much time and as, as we went and started talking about this well then I finally bet and he said well <clears throat> I said, I'm 76 years old and I never played before so anyhow I said well George come on over and let's see what we can do and so I uh, got him started playing and uh, he lived to be 89 and uh, so when he passed uh, I was talking to my son-in-law 
And uh, I said, I'd like to do something in George's memory. And he said, well, uh, <clears throat> George and Winifred would always come out and see us play, and they'd start dancing. And he said, how about stepping out with George? And so that's how we came up with the name here. So, and it goes something like this. Scratchy ass off of uh, friends, and because I'm the only friend he's got left. So <laughs> anyway, uh, but we did we did manage to coerce Charlie into coming and, and, and playing with us, and I gotta tell you, it feels pretty darn good to be able to play a little music with both these guys after well over a year, year and a half of uh, not performing, not playing. Uh, so it feels pretty darn good to be able to do this today. <laughs> Right. So tell me, what do you got for the folks? Come on. Well, the version I heard was from Flat and Scruggs. It's uh, rolling in my sweet baby's arms. <laughs>
Thank you. <coughs> the next tune I'd like to do for you is uh, one that I wrote to uh, <coughs> my great grandson, and uh, it, his name is Chase William. And so he got, of course, I wonder where he got the William from. <laughs> but anyway, uh, it's called Sir William Grill. Smarnos and, and uh, had the picture taken up there. That's when I tried to throw you off the bridge. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Almost forgot about that. But anyway, we called it the St. Charles Dulcimer Blues. Yeah, it's right down the river here. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, it kind of goes something like this and. Uh,
it there, Grandpa. I'm really glad we got to do that today. <laughs> So yeah. What are you going to do for fine folks out there today? Well, well, I'll just tell you. I'm going to finally put a hat on for you. Oh my! <clears throat> just so you guys feel better. <laughs> we'll knock knock the uh, luminescence down just a little bit in here. And I'm going to do a song that I wrote for uh, being that next weekend's Father's Day. Uh, I've got a song that I wrote for my father, my grandfather, both of which worked at Caterpillar. Uh, so I'm the third, third generation Caterpillar employee. Uh, I spent 44 years at Caterpillar and I do miss some of those, some of those days, quite a bit actually. More importantly, I miss my dad and my grandfather. They're both gone now and so I wrote a song about them and it goes like this. Don't you know I miss you so? Yes, we did. Anyway, it goes something like this.
you. Thank you so much to Bill Robinson and friends. Um, boy, any other festival year, I'd be on the stage right now and I'd be saying, and come out tonight to the, the local church for the Saturday night dulcimer old time dance. Um, we'll have to wait till next year. Um, one more set to go up for today. That's Bing Fudge coming up in a few minutes. Hi again, everyone. Um, I want to just uh, let Bing know that um, I'm just going to talk for a couple of minutes, and uh, but I'll make sure you get your whole set, and actually you'll be able to run all the way up to five o'clock if that's okay with you. Um, I, I want to just take a minute to talk about the festival and to kind of talk about live music. Um, I am a person who came to this festival um, rel relatively late. We still have people that have been working on it from day one. Uh, you've met some of them today. Uh, I did not show on the, on the scene until 2009. And uh, to, to pare down a much longer story, I'll just tell you that um, I came to the festival sort of on a whim and had uh, the most wonderful of experience for half of a Sunday afternoon. And through a set of circumstances involving the festival being canceled the next year, um, and my asking if it was going to be coming back, um, I was asked if I'd like to help organize a festival. And that's how I became involved. And I've been, I've been the coordinator of the festival since 2012. Um, I'm here to tell you that, that that little twist of fate and that little uh, being willing to say, sure, let me see what this is like to be involved, uh, opened up a whole new window in my life. Um, why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this because uh, well, two things. One is um, that uh, uh, live events like this, uh, like this festival or any, any live music event, um, relies on the continued work and effort and energies of lots of volunteers. And those volunteers can be doing it or 10 years or 20 years or 30 years. And at some point, uh, you realize that they're ready to get on to the next parts of their lives and new people need to be able to step in and, and kind of start to carry the ball forward again. Um, it's my hope that um, maybe some of you that are watching the concerts today and tomorrow or taking part in the workshops might uh, stop to consider if you're in our area, uh, which is the northern portion of Illinois, um, reaching out because we can always use new people with new ideas, um, people that can, can bring the festival forward into the future and um, because the original people that have been working on it will not be around to do that forever. And that's just a fact. Um, the second thing is, since I know most of you are not in my area or our festival area, um, stop and, and think about what is the live music that's going on in your space? And are there uh, festivals, folk music, dulcimer, anything going on uh, where you live? And consider if you have a little bit of time and maybe um, an interest in expanding maybe a little different 
part of your life too, that you reach out to them because I'll bet you they will say, sure, we could use some help, you know, come see what it's about. And if they do, maybe you'll have as good an experience as I've had. Anyway, so please support live music in any, any way you can. Um, I'm about to introduce our next performer who is Bing Futch. Bing Futch is a festival favorite of ours. And Bing is an example of a traveling musician who in a typical year will travel 30, 35,000 miles. And so when something like the COVID pandemic happens and all the venues across the country close down overnight, uh, somebody like Bing really has to reinvent what they do and figure out how to how to continue with their career and how to continue making music. So um, I hope uh, you will you will embrace and enjoy uh, our good friend Bing Futch. Thank you, Steve. It's great to see your face. It's great to see all these different and imagining that I'm there in Morris. And uh, how wonderful to see Bill Robinson and friends again. Uh, this is real nice. This is so nice. I'm so glad you guys got a chance to go virtual this year. I kick off with a little tune here called Shady Groove.
Oh, so much fun. I was going to try and have another camera looking down at the pedal board. Um, and it was just causing a lot of buffering and streaming issues. So I figured, never mind, we'll just do it. Just pretend you can see what I'm doing down here with my feet. <laughs> oh, man, what a year it has been, huh? The nice thing about the silver lining of the whole pandemic situation uh, and having all my gigs canceled for 2020 um, was having a lot of time on my hands to write and record and do all kinds of really neat stuff. So um, I did a lot of writing and uh, did a lot of recording. And uh, this is a new song that came up out of that and uh, appropriately titled The Sky is Falling. This is based on an improvisation. <laughs> As the sky is falling, and as it turns out, the sky wasn't really falling. But for a while there, it certainly seemed like maybe it was. I don't know. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, um, largely what I did last year was I, I recorded a new album. It's called The Beauty and the Terror. And this really uh, kind of summed up everything. There was a lot of stuff going on in the world besides the pandemic. There was just civil unrest and just craziness all over the place and um, one of the nice things about being an artist is you can take the things that plague your mind and spirit and you can purge them by way of creativity you know you can dance it out you can make a movie you can write it out you can record it out you know and so this was uh this is how i spent my uh pandemic vacation was recording this album and um i have a tip link that is in the comments of the chat. If you go into the chat section, you'll find the link there. Scroll up. Everybody, doesn't matter how much you tip, if you tip, um, I will send you this album with this incredible artwork uh, by Ken Pease, one of my favorite artists in the world. And I'm just very, very blessed that he said yes when I asked him if he would do the album design for this. And I'm gonna do three songs now from the album. And uh, so sit back and enjoy a little tour through uh, my brain in the middle of the pandemic. This first tune here is called Undertow. Careful, may wind up dead. 
That's what was told to me by the talking head. We've got the video. We've got the scooter. We've got your number. From a focus group. What's with the white noise? Waterfalls and calls to arms. Spilling out of my TV, trying to trip all my alarm. Maybe the predictions will turn out to be true. But I'm not gonna worry, I've got better things to do. I ain't afraid of what I don't know. Point me in the way that I must go. Heaven above and hell below. Waiting for me in the undertow. Going down like the last domino. Up till now, everything's been a sideshow. Truth hurts like a body blow. If you think you're ready, just say so. How many years? Time in the sky. How long until the grid pops and the infrastructure fry? Why would I waste another day of worthless worry? Once we were wild here and never, never thirsty. I ain't afraid of what I don't know Point me in the way I must go And above and hell below Waiting for me in the flow It's going down like the last diamond Up till now everything's been a sideshow Truth hurts like a body blow If you think you're ready, just say so stuff right there turn off the harmonizer bing <laughs> oh my goodness you know it's really something is you know when you gig a lot and you've been blessed to, to, to be gigging a lot you're out there and uh you're playing your repertoire you got a huge repertoire nowhere near as huge as, as bill robinson's repertoire that man can play for eight hours and never repeat a single song Now out there and you know I'm gigging all the time and all of a sudden there's no gigs and I'm not really practicing my repertoire I'm doing other things right so now all of a sudden gigs are starting to open back up again I'm like oh my gosh I'm rusty I need to work on my stuff so I was actually online before this concert doing all this online soul <laughs> here's a blues tune here for you this is called put you down Put you 
Thank you all. It's a very uh, presumptuous thing to say during a virtual concert because you're not sure if people are clapping or not. That's the one thing I've not gotten used to during this whole virtual thing. You know, it's like, what do you say when there's nothing going on out there? I see you, Donna. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, you know, folks, we're, uh, we're emerging and we're coming back into the light. We may not be going back to the way we were before, but at least uh, it's looking good out there. And I'm looking forward to seeing a lot of you guys in person again, getting back on the road and making music and hanging out by the campfire and jamming all night long. I wanna thank Steve and Hans and uh, the volunteers and all the people uh, over the years who have kept, kept Hardwoods Festival going and now in its first online version iteration, uh, making it happen as well. And um, I want to thank all the techs and the behind the scenes people uh, who are working hard on uh, making your concerts uh, go, come across smoothly. It was a great concert today. Looking forward to the concert tomorrow as well. Thank you guys for all of your work and uh, for all your dedication so that we can have these nice things, uh, even when we're not quite 
where we need to be again. Thank you guys so much. I got one more tune here for you. I do have hope, but man, uh, 2020 was a year that's going down in the record books for a lot of reasons, not a lot of them good. <laughs> and uh, this song uh, pretty much born out of that. This is the, it was going to be written for the album. It also contains the title of the album, The Beauty and the Terror, which is all about the dichotomy of life. You know, there are a lot of things in life that are just amazing. And there are a lot of things in life that aren't. <laughs> and inside of ourselves, there are a lot that are beautiful. And there are a lot of things inside of us that are terrifying. And I think that dichotomy is uh, prevalent everywhere. This tune is called The Question. Thank you guys for listening. I appreciate you. And uh, enjoy the rest of your festival and the uh, concerts tomorrow. Appreciate you very much. Try to 
shoot you down God bless everybody. Be safe out there. We love you. We'll see you soon. Thank you, Mr. Bing Futch. Thank you, man. These are complicated times and you're able to channel it into your music in amazing ways. So appreciate you being here. Uh, appreciate all of you being here. Um, hope lots of good virtual applause going on uh, all over. Uh, I think we learned today that uh, you know, as much as we may have dodged a thunderstorm in Morris, uh, you know, at times the internet has weather too. And the problem with internet weather is there's no Doppler radar to tell you when it's coming. So, you know, we, but we do the best we can and we really thank you for your patience and your understanding for any little glitches that happened today or that might happen tomorrow. Uh, just a couple more quick acknowledgements and thank yous. I want to uh, acknowledge the board of Hands of Illinois and the festival committee for the Gephardt Woods Festival. Uh, I wanna thank Brandon O'Sullivan of Clover Digital Media for um, a great job with us today. Thank you, man. Uh, also, the Illinois Arts Council Agency, from which from from whom we get a grant to put on our festival each year. A uh, quick uh, um, acknowledgement of the city of Morris, where we would be if we could be. Uh, also, strong supporters of ours. Um, to everyone who has helped spread the word about this year's virtual event through all your different channels, uh, and finally, thank all of you uh, for joining us today and for contributing to the performers during this time. Uh, and everybody else who's contributed to the festival in the last couple of years, we haven't had a chance to acknowledge people because we haven't been here to do it. Uh, and we like to do that. So um, uh, we hope to do that soon. Hope to see you back here again tomorrow and we're gonna do it all again. Thanks a lot, have a good night. <laughs>